welcome to the artwork of CP, you guys. Today, and I hate to do this, but trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning, big time. If and then the other one looking at me and she's shaking her head. Yes, if you're not in a good mental health state, please don't listen to this episode. Or if you need to get in a better mental health state and figure out what we're doing for mental health, um, you can listen to this episode. He's all off. Just go opposite um, sides of the spectrum. But I'm pretty sure that my fan base is in a stable mental health stable mental health state. Otherwise, yeah, I would hear about it or I would find out about it. And I'm just going to share my story on my mental health journey <laughs> and my mental health issues. And some of them you do know. Some of them you don't know. And then the other going to share her, her um, what she does for mental health too because um, Danielle has the same disability I do. If you guys haven't been around long enough, you, you know that you should know by now that Danielle has CP. And so um, all brains, not only because we're BFFs or, um, go away, um, our brains are similar in the way we think. And then the other laughing at me because I just said, go away to my email. Uh, yeah, today's been nuts, but uh, that's okay. And by the way, I got a new phone for you guys. So you're more than welcome to WhatsApp me, text me, duh, do whatever. I had a new phone. I Yeah, I've been on a walk. Well, I even have a band-aid on my finger because I injured my finger. Danielle doesn't even know this. I was trying to be independent and I um, cut my finger. <laughs> it's fine. It just, um, it just, today it doesn't hurt, but it was a paper cut, but it was deep enough to bleed. And so, yeah. Had to put hydrogen peroxide on that. Yeah. And so at the rate wind's going, my knee my knee pops out. I cut my finger. Um yeah. At the rate I'm going, I am supposed I'm still functioning. But that's uh that's beside the point. Now, um for those of you that are not, I don't know my story. I have lost um, both my parents. Danielle basically sat through me losing both my parents. And the day my dad died, I didn't even know she was showing up until I get a call saying, your doorbell's not working. And granted, I had, this was mid-afternoon on, on May 19th. And so I had like 10 million people in my house because they were all checking on me, of course. Um, and so the phone call I get is, hello, <laughs> you don't know. Not working. And I think I, I said, hello, what do you want? I think that's the word. My words out of my mouth. I didn't I didn't know that she was standing outside my door. And I talk about good BFF. Talk about good BFF. No, um, no, a mutual friend of ours was going to bring up, but she wasn't um in a good state at the time and the mutual friend left to come over to me. And so mom, her mom thought of it and we, we and she goes, hello, your doorpost's not working. And at the time, 
at the time my doorbell wasn't working because yeah, my house was falling around, uh, down around me. Hence, I moved to Arizona. So basically, when I lost um, my dad, uh, my dad, I don't know if I told you this, my dad didn't believe in counseling. So not only <clears throat> did I have my mom's death in 2010, um, I had my dad's death in 2019 and I was very angry at the world for number one my stepmom going to work every day leaving me eight hours with AIDS and yeah it was a form of neglect but not neglected food not neglected Showing. I mean, the AIDS were showing me, the AIDS were basically feeding me three breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But it was neglect in love. Basically, um, she had to go to work after my dad died. And because of his marijuana addictions. Yes, he was addicted to marijuana. And I can say that now because it's legal in Colorado. And Colorado has a, because, because it was the first legalized state and um, Colorado has a tendency to have a lot of drug users and let's be honest and let's be frank. My dad was one of them. So his marijuana usage got worse after my mom died. Of course, of course it did. He lost his wife of 28 years. And so and he was in denial because I had CP and he could barely keep me afloat, let alone the house. And so basically, when my dad died, my family came out in May of 2019. And they basically emotionally and physically abused me. The witnesses just stood there, didn't call the cops, didn't call anyone. My poor aide was shaking in her boots because she was getting paid by my family. And she stood up and did a witness statement. And she and I are still friends to this day. We talk on the occasion. And so, but my stepmom didn't want to deal with the emotional abuse or the aftermath of the emotional abuse. So when the cops came to my house to do, um, it was my aide who did a witness statement first, because of course I was in counseling because my stepmom made me go to counseling. She said, you go to counseling now or else, basically threatened me and controlled me enough to go, she, um, she's very codependent and very controlling. And I don't care if my family hears us, they, they know that. I don't care if she hears us, I don't care if she, um, if it gets back to me, yes, you said I'm codependent and controlling on publicly, I, yeah. So basically when my aide did the witness statement, because I was in counseling, I said to my counselor, I do feel safe at home, but this is what went on. Next thing I know, counselor calls adult protective services. And so, um, and you guys know all that part, but what you didn't know is that my stepmom didn't want to do the witness statement. Of course, 
my stepsister did the witness statement via phone because she was there at the house while the emotional abuse was happening towards me. And my aid already did the witness statement. I, being the vic main victim, had to go do a hour, hour, two hours interview, hour, hour and a half interview um, with a professional interviewer. And that was interesting. And so by the time it got to my mom's, by the time it got to my stepmom's witness statement, she didn't want to do it. And so she neglected me in love. Now, hence me moving, hence me moving to Arizona. And I decided, okay, you retire or I go. So basically it was, she had two choices. She could retire and help me or I go. I take, I take the money and I go somewhere. I didn't know where at the time, but Arizona was it. And so I knew as a fact that we were selling this house, selling my house in Aspen. And we looked at a apartment together. Now, granted, I was buying a house because it had fell under my name. And so we looked at an apartment together she started complaining about about the bedrooms in that apartment. And I'm like, really, really, you are complaining about the size of bedrooms. And then, and I, we did not buy that apartment. Hence, I moved to Arizona. And she didn't talk to me for two days when I said, well, I'm selling the house. And so she turned on her heels and walked out the walked out of my bedroom and knocked me for two days. But um, she a bit neglected me in love. And my father being a control person that he was, I took on that tendency and I took on that tendency by accident. I took on that tendency by accident. I took on the control tendency by accident. And yeah, so my stepmom and my father were both controlling. And I put myself in a recovery program, which I will leave out of this podcast. Just now, I'm in recovery. And I'm in um, counseling twice a month. And I am in counseling twice a month. Now, I am much better and stronger person because of counseling. I The reason why I shared all that story is because I believe that people with disabilities, especially people with disabilities, but people in general should go to counseling. Don't get angry like I did. Don't. And I tried to go to counseling after my mom died. That backfired on me because my dad and I shared my bank account. And so he looked at my statement and found out and said, no more counseling. And so only because he didn't believe in counseling and counseling has a huge stigma. So if you're in a bad spot, go to counseling or I tell you what, use something else as a counseling as a counseling space use books use snowboarding use artwork 
use music and movement, and I'm not talking about the music and movement, like I just use music and movement, use counseling, use, um, use EMDR, which is, um, there's many different versions of EMDR. Um, the one I did to put electrodes in my hands to, um, to shake my brain up a little bit, to um, make me less fearful about talking about the emotional and physical abuse, which I was because it's, it's that is that. But use anything you can to get yourself in a better head space. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Danielle, and I know you, you're on mute, by the way, mute. And so there we go, she got my signals. And so um, she probably heard me, but she's, she's off mute now. And so correct me if I'm wrong, because knowing that you snowboarding takes your mind off every care in the world. And if you ever have the chance to, if any of my fan base ever have the chance to chase Danielle down the hill, <laughs> do it. Or if you ever have the chance to chase me down the hill, do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. don't do this if you can't get help from the suicide hotline if you can't get help from the suicide hotline there are psychologists out there look up psychology today you guys and look up psychology today also look up coda c o d a and you'll find um, you'll find that you'll find out you'll find out what that is. Code stands for codependent anonymous, and that's the recovery program that I'm in. We don't promote ourselves. We it's more whether you are you want to come to a meeting. It's we don't promote ourselves as I rarely talk about it. But in this case, I will. And so, because we're talking about mental health. And so, I feel like it is limited mountain jump. Okay, thank you. And so, Challenge Aspen is doing limited, limited mountain challenge. And Challenge Aspen, I miss them dearly. I do, I do. I miss them in dealing. I don't know if you can see my shirt. It says wooden by autumn hat. But I miss Challenge Jasmine Dealing. Challenge Jasmine is one of the best programs in the country. Danielle, 
Danielle still has access to one of the best programs in the country. And I, yeah, I used to have access in to the best program in the country. I don't anymore because I'm 10 hours away. But um, challenge Aspen and look, look in your um, local communities for counseling resources. I know in Phoenix, Arizona, we um, happen to have a ton, but look beyond friends and family because friends and family can only do so much. Friends and family can only do so much. So I highly recommend you go take self-care, you go seek a counselor, you go, um, you go seek a counselor, you go do whatever you need to do for your mental health, for your mental health, with a horseback flying, having coffee with friends, going to a counselor, going to a meeting, going to a um, meeting of a fellowship, such as Codependence Anonymous or AA, thank you very much, or Al-Anon. Um, and AA is one of the big ones. Codependence Anonymous branched off AA. Um, Al-Anon is for family members of alcoholics. And so, um, and, and so they all branch off one another. I have not tried an Al-Anon meeting yet. That is actually my next step because I have family members that like to like to take the wine bottle a little too much. And so that's why. And so I would say do something for yourself for mental health purposes because you only live once and if you die at the end and saying I didn't work on my mental health, then we're going to have a bubble. And so you need to work on your mental health. For those of you that are caregivers, for those of you that are disabled, for those of you that have disabled people in your life, try, 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 and just be kind to them and try to persuade them to work on mental health and work on self-care. And Danielle's shaking her head like a woman because she agrees with me. And because the high percentage of people that get a phys physically and emotionally abused because of their disability, yes, I'm one of the sad Danielle's, one of the sad now because um, she came out and shared her story and it's disgusting, but the percentage is high. And so please, 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 if you feel unsafe, go tell someone. Um, counselors are first responders, teachers are first responders, uh, counselors are mandatory responders, um, mandatory reporters, mandatory responders, yes they are, but mandatory reporters. Counselors are mandatory reporters. Teachers are mandatory reporters. Um, and social workers are not, depending on what the case may be, what the case may be. And the veterans, program, if you are a vet, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because Challenge Aspen brings up, and Zoom is about to cut me off here, but I don't care. And so Challenge Aspen works so closely with the veterans programs, it's not even funny. And so if you are a vet, go talk to your VA, 
don't talk to UVA about Chandler Jasmine and or go talk to UVA about counseling. He's a one. He's a one. Just do something, people. Just do something for the sake of mental health. And it's a we're going to be a better society if we break the stigma about mental health and disabilities. And let's start being kind and compassionate to those with disabilities. Thank you very much. And that's how I'll leave it. And you can go find the resources. You um, you can go find the resources you choose, but that's my mental health story. Danielle takes it out on snowboarding and she takes it out on horseback riding too, which I've started, which um, is a level. Yeah. And so, CP. Say that again. PT. Yeah, PT helps too because it gets you up and moving. That's what you were trying to say. Somebody <laughs> like what? <laughs> physical therapy. Physical therapy is a not a way of mental health. Um, Danielle, you brought up a good point that I didn't even think of it until you brought it up. PT is a not a good way to ex because they say exercise helps mental health too. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> You brought up an excellent point. Well, Bridging Bionics does a fabulous job at that. And so PT, counseling, horseback riding, snowboarding, um, these means like Alcoholics Anonymous, Al-Anon, Codependence Anonymous, Anonymous, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And so just... What? Say that again. I missed that completely. Put it in the chat. Yeah. Put it in the chat. It's easier. So the list goes, you guys, the list goes on and on and on what you can do for mental health. But please, please at least take one day a week for your mental health and get respite care for yourself. Not for the individual you're taking care of, but respite care for yourself. Bring in respite care. I Music, music, thank you. <laughs> music music is another good way to distract you but for the caregivers out there get respite care I don't care if it's a friend or I don't care if it's a greater sedan but get respite care go do something for yourself so you don't suffer from a caregiver burnout and that being said we will see you guys next week for social media and disabilities. And by the way, I'm speaking tomorrow at PodFest. And so if you haven't, I'm sure the Vincent's prices have gone up, but if you have the opportunity to grab your tickets tonight, go um, check me out. I'm My speech is called How to Be Unique with how to be authentic with a disability when you're podcasting. And I put my speech together and yeah, just have that and I'll, um, I'll share it with you guys too. And we'll catch you guys next week. Bye you guys. Thank you for following us. With the Blondie said with the snow behind her. And yes, it is March, and it 
will end up From being very, very snowy time. in Aspen. So with a cute blondie in the hill PJs. And yeah, what she said, thank you for following us. And we will see you next week. Bye, you guys.